Now we're going to turn in our Bibles just now. We're going to bring God's message. And I want you to turn in your Bibles. We're turning to three portions from the Word of God tonight. First of all, to the book of Exodus, the Old Testament book of Exodus, chapter 12. The Old Testament book of Exodus, please, chapter number 12. Verse 29, Exodus chapter 12, verse 29, And it came to pass that at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne, unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of cattle. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants, and all the Egyptians. And there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was not a house where there was not one dead. And it came to pass that at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. Now, Matthew's Gospel 25, please. Matthew's Gospel 25. And, of course, it's the parable of the ten virgins. It says in verse 2, five of them were wise and five were foolish. In verse 6, it says, And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for your lamps are go our lamps are gone out. But, but the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. While they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. And afterward came also the other virgin, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour when the Son of Man cometh. Then Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16, please. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16. <clears throat> Verse 22, And the multitude rose up to gather against them, Paul and Silas. And the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosed. And, and the keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had be fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. And then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord unto all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night, and washed their stripes, and were baptized, he and his straightway. And when he had brought them into his house, he sat meat before them, and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. Amen. And we know that the Lord will add his blessing to the reading of his own precious truth. A little more than four hours from now, the clock will strike the midnight hour. The midnight hour tonight that will see not the end of another day, 
but will sound forth the end of another year. Dear friend, this evening it always reminds us what it tells us tonight that we have lived one more life. One more life has been lived and we have one less life year to live. Let me repeat that. When the clock strikes 12 tonight, the chiming of the clock will tell us we have lived one more year of life that is now behind us. And we have one year less in front of us. My dear unsaved friend tonight, no wonder the psalmist says we spend our years as a tale that is told. You think of the words of Job tonight, Job 16, verse 22. This is what it says. It says, when a few years are come, then I shall go the way from whence I shall not return. Dear unsaved friend tonight, when the clock strikes twelve midnight, another year of your life has lived and one year less for you to live. In our scripture reading tonight, we hear the clock strike twelve on three occasions. We hear the clock strike 12 midnight in Exodus chapter 12. It says, and at midnight. And in Matthew's gospel chapter 25, we hear the clock chime 12 o'clock midnight when we hear it chiming there. And at midnight. And in the Acts of the Apostles 16, we can hear the clock chime 12 again there because we read the same words, and at midnight. God wants to speak to us tonight on the final few hours left of this year concerning, and it was on the hour of midnight. When? I want to just for a few moments come to Exodus 12. And I want you to see in Exodus chapter 12 that it was on the hour of midnight, not midday. Midnight. It was in the hour of midnight that death came. We read. And it came to pass that at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. Want to come to Egypt now. And I want you to hear the clock strike twelve. It's now midnight. And in the hour of midnight in the land of Egypt, death came. It was a terrible night in the land of Egypt when the clock struck twelve. Because when the midnight hour chimed, death came and death visited the firstborn in every home of the Egyptians in the land of Egypt. And in chapter 11, Pharaoh was warned he was warned as to what was going to happen. He was warned as to what was coming, but he hardened his heart. Dear unsaved friend tonight, God has reminded you through every funeral that death's coming to you. Every time you went to a wake, God has spoke to your heart to remind you that death is coming to you. 
Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse number 2. Do you know what it says in Ecclesiastes 7 and 2? It says this, It is better to go to the house of mourning rather than the house of feasting, for this is the end of all men, and the living will lay it at their heart. I'll tell you there's something about going to the wake house. And there's something you learn in a wake house that you learn nowhere else. I know when I was growing up, my father and me used to go to all the wakes in the country, around our area. You know what it's like when you go to the wake house, man? You, you park the car maybe half a mile up the road, and both sides of the, the road are packed with cars. And you meet people coming and going, and you meet people carrying sandwiches, and you get near the home, and there's that stillness, there's that feeling as you approach the door, because you know rightly, death's there. There's a feeling with death. There's a sensation with death. When you go to the wake, you know death's there. And death has come. You know what it's like when you go to a wake. You go in and you sympathize with the family and you have your wee cup of tea. And before you leave, you ask, would you like to go up to see the remains? And you do. You go up and you're brought into the bedroom and there the open coffin is. And there death. Death stares you in the face. Every time, even before I was saved, you know, I used to go over to the edge of the coffin very gently. And I would look down. And it used to remind me, you know, I'm going to die someday. And at midnight, death came to Egypt. You imagine to me the land of Egypt at midnight. Death has come. Here on see a friend to me. You don't know. The time for you could be eleven fifty nine, you don't know. In another year, one more year, and that's it for you. One more month, maybe. Maybe one month left. Not you. Maybe one week. Not you. Maybe one day, and not you. The clock will strike midnight. Perhaps for you very soon. There's a family Tracy and I know of. Don't know them all that well. This night last week, everything was perfect. Family home for Christmas. Christmas Day was a... The home was just like your home and my home. Family all gathered together. Christmas dinner, the fun, the family, the fellowship, the food. It was just normal on Monday, Christmas Day. Monday passed me. Monday passed. And Tuesday, the daughter of the family in her late twenties felt unwell. Felt she was coming down with a flu. It got rapidly worse and they rushed her to the hospital. And on Wednesday, one of the last questions she asked the nurse was, am I going to die? We're not talking about somebody 80 or 90. We're talking about a young lassie in her late twenties. The last question she asked, am I going to die? And on Wednesday night, she did die. And tonight, her remains lie in a mortuary. 
waiting for a postmark. And on Monday, she was celebrating Christmas with her parents. 28 or 29, no sign of nothing, no sign of anything, just a wee flu-like symptom on Wednesday, Tuesday, Boxing Day. You don't have to be old for midnight to close your day on earth. That last night, this night last week, was waiting for Christmas Day to come. Opening her presents in Monday, and tonight, tonight, she lays on a mortuary slab. Death here. That ended her life on earth, and I'll tell you this in Exodus 12 midnight meant the end of life on earth for the firstborn in the land of Egypt. Beware tonight, death come. In Matthew chapter 25, you can hear the clock striking there tonight. Chiming 12. But at midnight, there was a great cry. It didn't end life on earth in Matthew 25 when the clock struck 12 for five virgins that ended their day of opportunity. You see, there was ten virgins, two groups of five. Five wise, five foolish. Why well, you take a look at the five foolish tonight? They didn't look any different from the five wise. Perhaps they didn't talk any different from the, from the, the five wise. But the difference between the five wise and the five foolish was the five foolish thought they were perhaps, perhaps they thought they were ready. And as these ten, as they go out to meet the bridegroom, five knew they were ready, but five perhaps thought they were ready. Maybe the five knew they weren't ready, and they said to themselves, Ach, we'll leave it to the morning and we'll look about oil then. The Lord, the bridegroom will not come the night. He'll, we'll leave it to the morning. We'll leave it to go and get oil in the morning, and then we'll be ready. Ah, but at midnight, the Lord, the bridegroom came. They weren't expecting the bridegroom to come at midnight. But when the bridegroom came, then they realized they had no oil. They weren't ready. They weren't prepared. Did I say something tonight, unsaved friend? The Lord Jesus is coming. The Lord's coming. And the only thing mattered for the five virgins tonight was the oil. It wasn't the way they looked. It wasn't the way they talked. It wasn't the way they walked. It was the oil that counted. And in the land of Egypt, it wasn't being an, an Israelite counted. The blood counted. When it came to the land of Egypt, when the clock struck twelve, I'm telling you, the only thing in the land of Egypt counted that night was the blood of the Lamb. And the only thing that counts when death comes is the blood of the Lamb. And I'm going to say this again and again and again because the people in this area and in the people of our land are blinded by this. When it comes to death, Baptist doesn't count. And when it comes to death, Presbyterianism doesn't count. And when it comes to death, Catholicism doesn't count. And when it comes to death, Protestantism doesn't count either. And that's what people's holding on to. Our dead tradition and rituals and religion doesn't count. The Lord G, the Lord says in Egypt that night, when I see the blood, wonder does the blood, does the Lord see the blood in you tonight? Have you applied the blood of the Lamb to your heart? Have you applied the blood of the Lamb to your soul? The only thing that counts at death is the blood of the Lamb. The only thing that counted in Matthew 25 was the oil. I'm telling you, the oil speaks of salvation. Doesn't speak of religion. 
doesn't speak of denomination at all. The oil speaks of salvation. The oil speaks of the Lord Jesus. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given amongst men whereby we must be saved. And when the clock struck twelve, the five wise went in. And the door was shut. And the five were foolish come knocking, Lord, Lord, open unto us. The Lord says it's too late. Do you see when the Lord comes? I'm telling you, it's going to be terrible. It's going to be terrible for children whose parents are took up and go into heaven and the children's left behind. It's going to be terrible for parents when saved children, when the Lord comes and the children goes up and they go into heaven and the parents left behind, it's going to be terrible for some unsaved, for some unsaved wife. When the Lord comes and the husband, he's saved, he goes up, he goes into heaven and she's left behind wondering where he's gone. It's too late. It's going to be terrible for some for some husband who had a saved wife and the Lord comes and, 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 and she goes up and she goes into heaven and the door's shut and he's left behind. Man, you, we're not far away from the midnight hour. In Egypt, at the hour of midnight, was when death came. It was in the hour of midnight when doom came. Doom came for the five foolish that missed their chance. In Acts 16, it was at the hour of midnight, all death didn't come. In Acts 16, at the hour of midnight, doom didn't come. In the hour of midnight, deliverance came. Exodus 12, midnight spelt the day on earth had come to an end. Matthew 25, at midnight, that spelt that the day of opportunity had come to an end. But in Exodus chapter, or in Acts chapter 16 tonight, in Acts 16, the day of living and sin came to an end. And a new life began. At midnight, God broke into this man's heart by shaking the very foundations of this prison. So much so that it awakened him out of his sleep. So much so he saw his need. So much so he was on his knees crying, what must I do to be saved? Listen, dear unsafe friend, God might have to shake your life right to the very foundations to get through to your heart and to get through to your soul. In Acts, Acts chapter 16, it was in the hour of midnight, there was rejoicing in the presence of the angel over this poor sinner getting saved. It was in the hour of midnight when a new name was written in the Lamb's book of life. Oh boys, what a night it was in Acts 16. Tonight, Tonight, perhaps God has been troubling you. God has been speaking to your heart. God has brought his son before you. And I want to say to you tonight, it's his son you need, not some old dead religion or any old dead ritual or tradition. It's Christ you need. And this man in the hour of midnight got wonderfully and gloriously saved. His journey began at midnight for heaven. Years can begin to me. It was in the hour of midnight. Death came. It was at the hour of midnight. Doom came. It was at the hour of midnight when deliverance came. Which one of the three midnights will tell your story? It's all down a wee one of prayer to God. 
We're not going to sing any more hymns tonight. We're just going to let the, the Lord, the Holy Spirit tonight do his work. And tonight, if God has been speaking to your heart, don't you leave tonight without speaking to us. That we lassie laying in a mortuary tonight could be you next time. It's vital that you're prepared to meet God. Money doesn't matter. Only Christ does. The Lord tonight, as we bring this meeting to a close, we plead, Lord, and we pray, Lord, will thou do that work that only thou canst do in the saving of a precious soul. We leave it all over to thee, Lord. Our prayer is, give the saving grace And as we part and separate, Lord, take us to our homes and say, give the saving grace for some lost soul to me. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And if anyone 